Happy Yule, everyone. How are you? And welcome to the Heart Center Spiritual Biz Support page, Facebook group. And we want to give a big shout out to Christina for hosting this amazing video summit. I'm just going to pop on, make sure we are good to go while people come in. Takes a little bit of time for people to get notified that I am live in the group. So, doo -doo -doo. let's see if I'm live. I should be. Yes, we're live. Yay! How is everyone? Waiting for some people to come in so we can say hello. Happy, happy Yule and season greetings, my sisters. How are you? It's crazy, crazy around here, isn't it? With all the hustle and bustle of the holiday season and getting everything finalized and trying to keep your sanity, right? <laughs> that is what it is all about, so... We're still waiting for some people to come in. I'm hoping that I can see comments. So let me go over to my other page. See if I can see comments there. None are coming in yet. Slow, slow, slow. So let's go ahead. It's about two minutes after. So I usually like to start about um, five minutes after. So people can get um, started. So while we're waiting for some people to come in, if you are here watching me live, please say hello and give me some hearts up, some thumbs up that I know that you're here. Please drop in and write in the comment. Hello. Happy Yule. Season's greetings. Just let me know that you are here and you are present in this live. And if you, hey, someone say hello. <laughs> if you're watching the replay, hit that. Hashtag replay on the comment for me and I will reply to all of the comments as soon as I can after the live feed. So I just wanted to give a big shout out to all my replay folks. We are not going to forget about you. We've got a couple people on here watching. Let's see if I got some comments coming in. Not yet. So let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully some people will come on in. I have my notes down here, so if I'm looking down here, I apologize. Um, all of my notes are on my computer, so. Hey, there she is. We got someone to say hello and give me a thumbs up. Hello, Marissa. And some hearts. They're starting to come in. It takes them a little while. Facebook is a little bit slow. <laughs> Facebook's a little bit slow. So um, let me introduce myself to you because you probably may be new to the Heart Centered Group or you may be new to me. My name is um, Susie, a.k.a. Madam Z, and I am a female empowerment leader, and I coach newbie witches out of the broom closet, and I help them along their way of their witchy path. I teach metaphysical classes. I'm a female empowerment leader, a leader, a moon circle leader, a high priestess, a master tarot counselor. I do all kinds of magical and witchy stuff. So, and a magical life coach. Anything that has to do with witchiness, I'm your chick. I'm it. I'm it for you guys. If you have any witchy questions, please, please call on me. <laughs> If you consider yourself a witch or a pagan or eclectic or something different that is connected to the earth-based, please let me know in the comments. And I pour my heart out to you, sisters, and welcome, sisters, as we talk about Yule. Does anybody here practice Yule, or am I the only one? Oh, we got comments on the other one. Okay. So hello, Angela. Hello, Marissa. Oh, thank you, Marissa. I usually try to wear a headdress or some kind of head thing during these um, live videos because I just love them so much. <laughs> so my comments are showing up on my other page. So, 
Um, let's talk a little bit about Yule celebrations and the traditional Yule practices that go on for our ancient um, ancestors versus how we can bring that into our modern day practice, our modern day witch practice and how we want to honor them, but we don't have time to cut down a huge <laughs> <laughs> yule log and burn it in the fireplace so we're gonna kind of like condense it and modernize ah Tanya and modernize um, the practice without losing the magic of it all so let's start off with talking about what Yule is and if anybody has drink drink up yay so Yule, or winter equinox, is the shortest day of the year. It is known as winter equinox, Yule, Christmas, however you want to um, associate that with, is the earliest celebration of Yule can be found in ancient Rome, Celtic, and Norse traditions. Um, the interesting fact about when I was researching for this, um, Yule was celebrated by the turning of the wheel, right? And what I found was interesting, we have what we call the 12 days of Christmas. And everybody usually knows about what the 12 days of Christmas is, right? But the 12, Yule usually starts on the 12th day holiday and begins on what we call Mother's Night, December 21st. And it ends 12 days later on Yule Night, January 1st and it's the origin of Christian 12 days of Christmas so I thought that was super super interesting because I always wondered where did that 12 days of Christmas come from you know so um, I found out a lot of stuff when I was researching my um, my little um, workbook on Yule celebration so another tradition when you're looking at the wheel of the year is the Oak King and the Holly King and how they battle each other out. They are associated with certain wheel of the year. The, Oak, the Holly King is associated with the darker side, whereas the Oak King is associated with the light side. And they battle each other out. And they're for supremacy of the wheel of the year and of the universe and of the seasons. So this time, the old Holly King takes over the Oak King, and this is his time. This is when you see like Old Man Winter with the um, Holly Oak, right? With all of you see him in like mistletoe and oak and fur, and he's all bearded. And that is the Holly King, and he reigns until the start of winter, be beginning of Yule, when the Oak King is reborn and prepares battle for the Holly King, and then they rule over the, the um, other part or the light part of the year again. So they battle each other. It's, what's interesting is when you, when you look at the wheel of the year and the seasons of the wheel of the year, everything is a battle between light and dark, right? Everything is about yin and yang in balance. And that is what they try to, you really trying to strive for the whole time is balance in your life, right? Um, let's look at some other things and how we can honor our ancient past, our ancient Yule traditions, and bring them into modern witchcraft. So let's talk about some old ancient ways. Um, I'm trying to see the comments on everyone. Yay, yay, comments. So, one of the things I wanted to talk about is the heart and home, how so important it is during this time of year of Yule. Um, and I also want to talk about traditional ways of celebrating Yule and how to bring it into your everyday magical practice. So, let's talk about the 13 ways of how to bring the magic into your Yule practice. Um, 
you can decorate a tree with ornaments and bless each ornament that you place on the tree with health and wealth and happiness and wisdom and prosperity and peace. So every time you speak into that little ornament or you talk to it, you place it on the tree and you pick another one and you speak to it what your intentions are for the next year and you place it on the tree. Um, another one is hanging evergreens or wreaths around your house. And we'll talk about what the traditions were, what they meant when you had holly, when you had wreaths, when you had evergreens. So we'll talk about more of the traditional stuff. Um, you can also bring a small yule log, you can buy them, you can make them, you can, um, I think I've had mine, actually, I got mine from Michael's, because you can go to Michael's and they have those logs, and I just took a little drill and drilled out three holes, put the candles in there and put some holly in there, and some red berries and evergreens, and that's my yule log, and it sits on my table. Or you can put it on the mantle. Or you can actually make one that is specifically for this Yule season, and then you will burn it in the Yule log as a sacrifice. So um, either way, I keep mine every year, and I just pack it up and bring it out every year. If you're in a, a place where you can burn your Yule log, you can actually dedicate that specific Yule log, and you can burn it in your fireplace. No comments yet. I hope I don't. I'm not missing any comments. I hope not. I hope I'm not. Um, the next one that we want to talk about is if you don't have a fireplace or you can't go make a Yule log, um, the one thing that you can do is make an edible Yule log. Okay. Um, bakeries here make them you can try to make them at home you can bring the whole family in together and then you make that during yule and then during your yule celebration or your yule feast you will take that yule log and you will cut it up for dessert or cakes and ale oh thank you annette yay someone's here coming i was like oh, please don't let me miss comments <laughs> you never know with facebook facebook is kind of yonky wonky and i just want to make sure i'm not missing comments um, another one which I love to do is um, making some mold cider or mold wine. I make mine in the crock pot. Um, it has all of the herbs that are associated with Yule. So another one that you can use is make gingerbread cookies. And here's my little tip for that. Just don't make normal gingerbread cookies where, you know, they look like, you know, Hansel and Gretel gingerbread kind of thing. Use them and make them for little poppets. So cut them out, decorate them for what you want for 2019. If you want health, prosperity, wealth, happiness, completion, peace, harmony, and write that on the actual gingerbread, on the gingerbread man. So use them as little poppets, use them as stuff for effigies and things that you want to release or you want to bring in. So be intentional with that type of working and using the gingerbread as little puppets. So that's a cool way to do it. Um, sing Yuletide songs, of course. I always have music going in the background when I'm doing cooking. I don't know about y'all, but I always have um, some kind of music going on. Spend the day with your family making Yule crafts. Um, and I don't know if you can see these. Oh, yeah, edible Yule log. Yeah, Shelly is um, our baker here. So she, <laughs> I would love for her to make a Yule log and to share it with us. So um, I don't know if you can see these in the background. Let's see if you can see in the background. But that cure hanging on the wall are um, witches Yule balls. And that is another way to bring in the modern witchcraft of Yule is making witch balls. And I hang them all over the place. You can hang them as ornaments. I hang them in the kitchen for um, magical purposes. I hang them outside my door during Yule for protection. And I hang them on my Yule altar. Um, tons of crafts. You can, like I said, we're going to talk about some other crafts in the workbook. 
Um, but that's just an, a thing that I did for, I usually do it every year, but this is, um, I wanted to show you what it looked like. Um, put candles in the window and around your house to welcome the sun. Because again, Yule is a dark season as far as being the winter months and the sun is not as bright during the season, right? So we're moving into the sun solstice, which is the leaving the darker part and welcoming the sun. So whenever I do anything that has to do with um, altar work for Yule, I always do red, green, and silver or gold, but I always put a little touch of yellow in there because I'm always trying to get the sun to come out, welcoming the sun, welcoming the warmth. So that is a little bit of what I do in my practice. So make sure that you, that is another reason why we used to, our ancestors used to use candles, is not only to light their way or to use it as fuel or to use it for a heat source or use it to see things. It is a way in the ritual, it is a way for them to welcome the sun back, the light, that lighter half of the year. So make sure you include your sunflowers, at least one thing that's yellow. So I love the pictures of your balls on dress. Ah, oh, thank you, Annette. Now that's the most adorable head, <laughs> Christine. I know. I was I got it at the Yule Bazaar this week when I went to um, read at Nature's Treasures, and I was like, uh, yeah, because you know me, I always have a headdress for you know any of these live videos, any of the collaborations that we do, and I was like, that spoke to me, and I was like, I am getting this headdress. Christine is gonna love it. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, so yes, back to that, Christina got me distracted. So make sure you light a candle to welcome the sun back in and try to, you know, entice them, welcome, 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 you know, come back in and we honor you and we'll honor the sun. So don't forget about that. Um, recognize, here's a new one, recognize Santa Claus as a multi, 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 hold on a second, multicultural icon. Um, not just what I, you know, the whole white jolly old kind of thing. Um, cause he started off way before any of that started before Coca-Cola got his hands on him and made him who he is now. Um, recognize him and do some research on how other heritages celebrate him, how other ethnicities celebrate him and bring them into their practice and what it means to them. Because he's across the board on all kinds of paths. It's not just Christian. So honor him as something that is multicultural and use him as you doing some research on how he is celebrated in different cultures. Okay. You find it interesting once you start researching the origin of Yule, it's interesting. It's like a rabbit hole and you have to look at all these different things and how you want to celebrate it and where it started from. And so be prepared to spend a couple of hours <laughs> researching it. So um, another thing that you can do is meditate on the rising and setting solstice sun. I recommend that you do meditation during this time. If you do yoga, do some yoga practices during this time. I'm in Austin, Texas, so it's beautiful weather out here now. It's like in the 60s, six, upper 60s, lower 70s. So we can still get out and do yoga outside. Um, if you, it's the weather is kind of crazy where you're at, just get by a window and make sure you meditate, open the window, let the sun in that you can, and just welcome the sun and do your releasing as the sun sets and do your invoking when the sun comes up. So meditate on that. Um, join others in a Yule ritual. This is huge. If you want to get out and start connecting with other pagans or earth-based or you're just not even that maybe you're just kind of curious of what happens in a yule because you'll you'll be surprised what ritual really is it's not what you see on tv it's not any of the horror films 
It is a beautiful experience where you get connected with what is going on with Mother Nature and giving thanks. My practice is huge on giving thanks and connecting with the cycles. So look for a earth-based religious type of circle group in your area and join their Yule ritual. We are very welcoming, very understanding, very nice. <laughs> We are, you know, I did a whole thing on what, you know, witches are supposed to be and what they're, the myths of it, and it's not what you think it is. So I invite you to just really expand your knowledge and check out a local Yule ritual. Um, and this is a big one, too. Contribute to charity that is near and dear to your heart because don't forget, it is the season of giving. Oh, Krampus moving brother. I know we're gonna talk about him. They have a, a Krampus um market and they also have a Krampus parade. So yeah, Krampus is another one we're gonna talk about. Hey Caitlin, welcome. It's okay, you're late, you're always on time. You are on time for yourself. So um cool, cool stuff. And we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about a little bit what <sighs> how they de depict the devil, where it came from, what it really means, that kind of thing. It's not what it, you think it is. I promise you it's not. So those are some ways that you can bring in some of the modern Yule practices into your modern kind of practice, right, um, with honoring your ancestor work. So um let's talk a little bit about the history of stuff what happened where, where did it come from um we're going to talk about the yule log mistletoe that kind of stuff so describe some drinks and some pins and hang out <laughs> for a little bit but don't you know don't worry if um this is all in the pdf that i'm going to be giving you so ask questions if you need to i'll be glad to answer them and let's just sit and talk about what Yule really is and knock out some of the, the myths of what Yule really is. Um, let me catch up on comments. Okay, we're good. So um, the Yule log tradition goes back to way before like the medieval times and Norse traditions. It was traditionally like a whole tree. So what they would do, and it was a big ceremony. It was big, huge. And I, and I used to do this when I was a kid in a family, when I was a kid in my family. We would go out to this big, huge Christmas farm, and it was a big deal. And we would go find our Christmas tree, cut it down, and bring it back. Spend all day putting it up, cussing and carrying on because the tree is always too big, right? My dad's probably sitting there drinking, cutting off all the, you know, the bottom of it, trying to make it even, and you know, all that kind of stuff. So it was a big deal. But it stems from back in the medieval times. Um, they would pick the largest part, the largest tree, and bring it back to their hearth. And it was a huge tree. So the trunk would be sitting in the hearth while the other half of the tree was probably outside of the door. And it was hung in um, the common room and the living room. So it took up the whole living room and outside even. And then they would light the log and it would burn day and night and they would start slowly shoving in the burnt part and bringing in the new growth and so every day they would move closer and closer and closer now um, the log was lit from the previous log which was saved for that reason so it was slowly burned and fed into the hearth over the next 12 days of Christmas and so they always kept a little bit of the embers and a little bit of the log from the previous year in order to light the current year's Yule log. So that's where it started. Um, so now that's that's why we have the Yule log. Now we're like, well, I can't buy a whole new, go cut down a whole tree and have it hanging out in my, <laughs> my living room. And, you know, we don't have that, have to do that anymore. Thank God we have, you know, heat and um, gas for that. But that's what they used to do to keep their hearth and their house warm is they would burn that huge tree day in and day night for 24 hours. And um, 
that is some of the practices. I have I've had a real tree twice and I live in Wyoming. I know that's what we used to do. We used because Caitlin and I from Wyoming. We lived in Wyoming for many years. So yes, we used to go out there in Wyoming and um, cut down the tree. So instead of doing that, go make a freaking new log, right? Or go buy one, a little bitty one like this big at Michael's and make your own and put it on the hearth. So we can do things for Yule that honor the past traditions, but it doesn't have to be so elaborate anymore because we don't have to have that. So, and let's talk about the Yule tree. We can't talk about Christmas and Yule without having the Yule tree too. There's so many Yule trees traditions that stem from the Celtic, the Norse, the Germanic paths. Um, so that's how the, the tree started, the lore of the Christmas tree. Um, it was a symbol of the goddess and the sacred part of their worship for the Celtics. I am drawn to Celtic, Celtics. I have always been drawn to the Celtic, Celtic path, um, path, so it is very important to me. Um, they decorated the Yule tree with images of returning of the sun, so that's where you get the gold um, ornaments and the gold colors and the lights and shiny things and the manifest to bring into the new year. Um, and they also decorated with corn and wheat for the great harvest, happiness, success, and love. So that is where that tree tradition came from. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about some other stuff that we can do. Um, I want you to, if you do greens, greenery, right, evergreens or mistletoe or um, anything that has to do with wreaths, Save them, and on the 12th night, take them all down and save them for the next one. You want to save them for in bulk. And in bulk, you take those greeneries and you burn them as a sacrifice, and you banish the winter, and you bring in and usher in the spring. So don't get rid of your greenery. Don't get rid of any um, of your... Wreaths that are natural, of course, don't do this if it's artificial. And keep them so that way we, you can burn them in the fire and usher in the spring. Um, let's look at, talk about, any. let me catch up on comments. Celtic Ballet, I love it. It's so interesting. Um, mistletoe, mistletoe is huge. So let's talk a little bit about the myths of mistletoe. I found this super interesting because I know it was always magical. But um, the history and the folklore of mistletoe started with way, way back. So you're looking at Roman time. Okay. Um, it was actually started kissing under the mistletoe tradition, started for the Roman festival of Santa Maria, which took place under the Christmas, of course. And um, it was banned. It was funny, though, because when Christianity came in, it was banned because it would, had to do with love and lust and prosperity and abundance and protection and, you know, that kind of heathen kind of stuff, I guess. And so the Christians didn't like it, so they kind of banned mistletoe. You couldn't do the, You couldn't have mistletoe. And they say in some churches now, they still, in Catholic churches, they still ban mistletoe. You're not allowed to have mistletoe and bring that in. Um, it was hung by in the home. Um, let me see. And also, it was hung in the home for protection and for happiness and love and to sure, ensure good luck and fertility. And I found this interesting, too, that... It was for magical purposes and um, folklore. It was supposed to protect you from disease, lightning, werewolves, <laughs> and and protect you from the fairies changing your, taking your children and changing them into fairy, fairy changings. So that was interesting. The fae are, they're jokers. So you want to be careful of that. But they used to hang it by the mistletoe. So when you kiss them, it would bring you good luck and your relationship would be um, bound together, be long lasting. 
And so that is why you kiss under the mistletoe to be bonded, uh, you know, again, so the relationship will be um, solidified, if you want to call it that. So it's pretty cool. Um, the next thing let's talk about is, um, I think that's all I have for that one. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I think I had some more. I think that's it. Oh, um, here's an interesting one. And you guys may not even know about this. Krampus is another one. But this is kind of a, you may not know about this one. It may not be as well known. It is called the Yule Goat. And my sis, not my sister, my um, circle sister, she is what they call a heathen, which a heathen is a person who practices the North path, the Norse path, I mean, path. So a Yule Goat is a goat that's associated, it's called the Joel Book. I'm going to, I'm going to be horrible at these names, these um, names, because I'm going to butcher them. I know it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Scandinavia, I'm sorry. So it is an, associated with the Nordic god Thor and his goats, Gap Tooth and Tooth Grinder. It's, and I found this interesting because the two goats pulled Thor's chariot and provided food every evening by being slaughtered and sacrificed and then to rise again. So it kind of reminds me of Santa Claus and the reindeer, right? How the goats or the reindeer pull Santa Claus's sleigh. I'm telling you, it all intertwines. It all comes together. So, and it's custom for them to, you know, sacrifice and be reborn. That it's interesting, and that's a lot of our practice is to sacrifice and be reborn, sacrifice and be reborn. Talks about death and rebirth, death and rebirth, death and rebirth, right? But how can we bring that into our modern day practice? Well. They have these all over the place. If you look for them, they are little bitty. Well, you can't get them huge. They have them in Scandinavia where they're huge, but they're little straw goats. They're about this big. You can get them on Etsy or you can just look for them. Or you can make your own. Put it on your um, Yule altar. Put it on you know anything that has to do with your practice. Or you can keep it and then sacrifice it by burning it. And then that is death and rebirth and death and rebirth. So he is a Yule goat and they're kind of cute. They have huge ones where um, in Sweden, it's called the Gavru goat, G-A-V-L-E goat, and the giant Jolbuk, Jolbuk. And they're huge, they're kind of cute, but they're made out of straw and then they'll burn them for, to sacrifice them. So if you're into the Norse or you wanna bring in Norse, some more Norse traditions, that is another way of bringing that in. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now we we'll talk about some of the herbs. Well, let's talk, okay. So let's talk a little bit about Krampus, okay. Krampus gets a bad rap. I love Krampus. He's hilarious. And as far as <laughs> you're like, why is he hilarious? He like, looks like the devil. He's horrible. But he's not really. He's more of like a threat to like bad children. He's like the counterpart to Santa Claus being good. Right. He'll round up all the bad children and threaten to kill them and threaten to be like, if you're not good, then I'm going to snatch you up and take you from away from your parents kind of thing. So it's kind of this folklore of him going around snatching up kids because they were bad. And it's all about trying to threaten your kids to be, behave themselves is what it is. And it's just a counterpart to Santa Claus. <laughs> so Santa Claus is doing good. And you know, if you have good, you have to have evil, right? It's the whole balance thing. So the, Krampus is the evil part. Well, if you want to call him evil of Santa Claus, because he wants to make sure that if you your children don't behave, then he'll snatch them up and this whole thing. So it's a big thing. It's, you know, huge here, especially in the Norse practice. Krampus is amazing. They do all kinds of parade. They get down with it. So that is another one. So if you want to bring more of that into it, your practice, they have all kinds of Krampus ornaments, um, pins, statues. Look at that and bring that into your practice. So I like him too. He's pretty cool. Um, so let's look at some of the correspondences that 
are associated with yule. Let me stop for comments. Does anybody have any comments yet? Is this running long? No, we're good. We're good, I think. We're almost done. Yeah, PDF. PDF will come later. You'll get all this in the PDF and more. And all kinds of cool stuff. I don't see any more comments, so I think we're good. I think we're caught up on comments. So, things that are associated with Yule. Let's talk about the herbs. We're going to go kind of fast. So, don't feel like you have to write this down if you, if you don't have a pen and paper because it will be in your PDF. So, no worries. Um, your herbs are, of course, your mistletoe your evergreen, your holly, your cedar, ash. Ash is supposed to be good luck, right? Bay, blessed thistle, chamomile, frankincense, juniper, and pine. Pretty much all your trees, right? Because it has um, it has a tradition of bringing in and honoring the Celtic tree. So anything that has to do usually about your tree, any tree, it will be your correspondence of that. Your gemstones are going to be your clear quartz, jet, ruby, diamonds, garnets, which is going to be um, like your res in white, in green colors, alexandrite, kunzite, kunzite, sorry, citrine. Citrine brings in the sun. Remember I said you have to remember to honor the sun and try to get him back. So anything that has to do with sun or orange or yellow is going to be associated with the sun. Green tourmaline, blue topaz. Pearls, which has to do with ice and snow, and orange calcite, which is the sun, and then ametrine. Um, so let's talk about the archetypes, right? So who is associated with Yule? What person, what male and female is and deities are associated with Yule? So it is, of course the old wise woman, the crone, any goddess in the crone stage is going to be the female archetype for Yule, the holy mother, the, um, she's a German hag, so you might want to look her up, um, and Yurig, I'm sorry, Yur, Yur, I don't even know how to say that, the Celtic goddess and wife of Lou, so for the male, it's going to be Father Tom, of course, um, the Holy King and Krampus, right? So um, your, deity, your deities are going to be Amaratsu because she is a sun goddess. And she'll be trying to bring in the sun. Baba Yaga, I love her. She is Slavic. She is in the old Slavic predict, um, what is it? Old Slavic mother crone type of witch modern you know witch kind of thing i love her she's very cool looking um and she has to do with children too it's interesting because the whole thing is about trying to like steal children for some reason and <laughs> make them behave so calic which is celtic and demeter hodor and saturn which is the sun goddess so the return right and so some correspondence for your herbs are cardamom, cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, peppermint, rosemary, and sage. Really, all of your cooking spices that you associated Christmas and Yule with are the herbs that are associated with Yule. You can take oranges and just put or punctured cloves in it all around it and put it in part of your Yule um, practice. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, trees, a cedar, evergreen, holly, pine, spruce. Colors are green, gold, ice blue, red, and white. And your crystals are clear quartz, malachite, onyx, and ruby. So your metals are going to be gold and lead, though, because gold is prosperity in the sun. Um, your animals are going to be your bear, crow, or oxen, right? Reindeer, of course, goats, horses, reindeer ravens and stags your symbols are going to be your cauldron the darkness the evergreens the light because we're bringing in light trees wreaths in your little yule log now let's talk about tarot so what tarot cards for all you tarot lovers out there which is i am um what tarot cards are associated with yule so think about some of the tarot cards that bring in the energy of being by yourself 
being withdrawn, um, doing a lot of introspective work. Um, so it's going to be the hermit, the magician, pinnacles, because pinnacles has to do with your body and how grounded you are, and the world. Because we are at a complete cycle almost. We're going to start over in January. So those are the tarot cards. And you can always do a tarot spell for the new year with any of these cards. So um, I've got some Yule recipes in this PDF for you. I've got all kinds of Yule craft stuff in here. So this is a wonderful PDF for you to keep that I am gifting you. Christina, I've been dousing everything with cinnamon and orange. Yes. <laughs> So my house, um, I do a lot of essential oils, so my house always smell, smells like Christmas cheer or Yuletide and um, trees. It's just what it is. So um, let me pop in the PDF so you can get all of this cool stuff, and I'll pop it in here for you. And I will try to pop it in here. I'm not sure if I can. But this PDF is a wonderful way to get started on your Yule practice. It's a great time. You still have time to go make some stuff, to go get stuff to make your wassail, which is a recipe in here. Your gingerbread recipe is in here. Your Yule crafts um, are going to be in here. All your correspondence are in here. Oh, thank you, Christina. And um, so this is a wonderful PDF to get started on your practice. If you are starting your book of shadows and you need to start looking at your wheel of year stuff, feel free to print this off and put it in your book of shadows and start. It's a good place to start, especially for the first of the year that's coming up. So go ahead and print that off and put it in your um, book of shadows. Um, it's got cool stuff information, lots of correspondences in there, lots of ideas in there. Um, so like I said, just hop on over there, grab it, print it out, keep it by you. So that means you can put it in your Yule um, Book of Shadows section and then get started on doing some of this stuff. It's super easy to honor the past Yule traditions and bring them forward into the modern day witchcraft practice. Don't let that stop you from being more magical in your practice. Honor your ancestors, honor where it came from, but it doesn't necessarily mean we have to go cut down a whole doggone tree. By the way, if you go cut down a tree, make sure it is farmed ethically, if you want to call it that, but make sure that when you take that tree, you bring an offering with you and you set an offering in the place where you took that tree and thank that tree for giving you that life. So you can bring some of that cheer and Yuletide celebration into your world. It is all about um, responsibility. It's all about respect. It's all about giving back and giving thanks. And you do not take unless you give. And that is my spill about <laughs> Christmas trees. So make sure that you are cutting down your Christmas tree from a farm that plants two or three different trees for one tree that is taken. So that's just my soapbox thing. So I think that's it. Does anybody have any other questions before I go? I hope you enjoy that Yule workbook that I worked for and put up there for you. It's got all kinds of juicy, cool information in it. And like I said, if you have a question, send me a message. Hop on over to my Witchy School of Wisdom group. I am always available to answer any questions that you have. Or if you're stuck in a practice, I'm here to coach you through it. I'm here to walk you through any, you know, hiccups that you have during your practice. So I think that's it for now. And thank you, Christina, again for hosting such a wonderful video summit. And I really enjoyed talking to you guys and sharing what I do and some of my Yule practice. All right, and if you have any other questions, please send me I am, I will be here for you. Ah, oh, thank you, you're welcome, Erin. And I'll be here for you if you have any questions, just shoot me a message. And happy Yule, happy Yule, everyone. All right, bye, friends. Bye.